Hey, good morning. What's up guys? Andrew Curry here for a Tai Chi workout. Listen, um, I'm going to go over something this morning that, uh, again, you know, as I, as I spoke about in the previous video about uh, people not understanding the holistic nature of Tai Chi and being somewhat uncomfortable with separating the parts and practicing just a part. Okay, so one of the things that, that I see going on is, you know, people say, well, if I've gotten, if I've gotten pretty good at this art, should I go and do this art? Well, of course. I mean, you know, everything supports everything else. So, we're, you know, follow your bliss, follow your passion. But uh, here's the thing: if you're going from from uh, Yang style Tai Chi like we're doing in our school here, soft, slow moving kind of thing, to a Chin style because it's a little more dynamic, or even to like a fast Wu style or something like that, or or even you know uh, some of the other external martial arts in order to get more stimulation in. Yeah, you can do that. It's absolutely okay. But, um, you know, you run the risk of complicating your practice so that you, instead of becoming good at one thing, you become kind of half okay at a lot of things. Well, Tai Chi, one of the things that, you know, after coming out of a hard style background myself, one of the things that I enjoyed about Tai Chi was it was the same every week. I could, I could focus more deeply on uh, having greater insights about what these kind of things meant. Now here's a couple of insights that you might want to consider, especially if you've gone all the way through the form already. You might want to consider why is roll away press and push and single whip in the form so many times? Why do we repeat steps like brush knee and push or retreat step repulses the monkey or even uh, waving hands and clouds? Why are those steps repeated? Okay, well you could say, well it's a, you know, to come up with a mythical number that corresponds to the ancient uh, ways or something like that. Or you could say these moves were important because they were being used more, most frequently when people start to play push hands. Okay, that, that would be to me a more rational explanation. But here's another one that's come up this week. People want to know, okay, I'm doing my Tai Chi practice and I'm doing it really slowly. How is this going to be effective in a real fight? Well, once you get to the point where you're comfortable, say with a combination of movements like roll away, press and push, you can do them at any speed you want, right? If you look at a lot of the old practitioners, they're moving along with their form. They're not just, you know, doing this nice slow little dance like we normally do. So I'm going to demonstrate for you this morning what I would call the fast set. It's the same form that we do all the time, but I want you just to get a, an idea of, of uh, yeah, you can play this fast if you want. So here we go. Okay, so what was that, about 30 seconds? So the first half of the form usually takes me about two minutes and I've just condensed it into 30 seconds. Now that may seem like an awful lot of uh, pressure on you if you're trying to, to learn a fast form. But also you can see, it's much more dynamic, it's much more fight-like, you can, um, but all the parts are still there. Okay, so all the parts are still there. I'm still dropping into a foot, making sure that my body is turning over that weighted hip and making a shape. Find the foot, make a shape, make a shape. Okay, and you can do this, you can do this lickety split if you want. I mean, you're, you're reducting, you're reducing the, the, the form into its simplest basic shapes. Okay, which is foot, hip, and shape, foot, hip, and shape. If you can get your mind around that, then all of the other stuff that we normally do, the wind-ups and all that kind of where your hands are exactly and that kind of stuff, just becomes minutia. Now, here is the easiest way, in my opinion, to start doing this. You can start doing it with warding off right, left, and right. Okay? And reset. Warding off right, left, and right. Okay? And reset. Okay? Warding off right, left, and right. Okay? You can change your rhythm a little bit. You can say warding off right, left, and right. 
And that's an idea for you. Okay, roll away, press, and push are the same way. Okay, so we have roll away, press, and push. Okay, so you can say roll away, press, and push. See what I'm saying? You can just mix it up, mix and match it, play around with it. It's absolutely okay. Now, know when you're doing that, you're actually going back more towards a Kung Fu style of practice, which is an external style of practice. You're just focused on the effort that your body's making, lining things up and making shapes. Okay, but it will inform your slower practice. And then you go back to doing it this way and you think, wow, there's so much time in here. Okay. So, um, a lot of Tai Chi masters, I don't know if you've experienced this or not, but a lot of Tai Chi masters are really fond of time warping. This is one of the ways they're doing it. They're actually increasing the amount of time between things happening. And it has a tendency to slow down reality a little bit. Okay, so that's another fun thing for you to play with. Okay, now there's an idea for you. It's just something to, just something to play with. Um, good luck, good practice. We'll see you soon. Bye now.